This full suspension fat tire electric bike has nine gears. That's like two more than usual. And they claim we could do 50 miles of range and hit a top speed of 28 miles an hour. MSRP on this one is 1800 bucks, but in the link below this video in the description box, you can find a significant discount on that price. Back up, oh my goodness. But do not buy the Cycrown Psych Ultra just yet. We need to crack this box open, take a closer look at this e-bike, then take it out for a full review and see whether or not it's worth the money. Warm tips. Do not ride in high heels. Always wear closed toe shoes with shoelaces tied when riding. I don't know if this is gonna work out. Dude, you're breaking the rules already. You already know. We're gonna be rolling on knobby tread. The typical 26 by four inch wide tires. Better for off-roading than 20 inch tires. It's got a 160 millimeter rotor on front. And on side, there's also a 160 millimeter rotor. Looks like we're gonna have to install the kickstand on our own. And we do have hydraulic brakes rolling on DY Island calipers. To the right here, we can see it is a Bafang 750 watt rear hub motor, 750 DC. One thing that separates this bike from the pack is there are nine gears, which we'll take a closer look at in a few. And here's what it's looking like when we get out of the box. It is full suspension. It's actually a four link rear suspension. One, two, three, four. On the Psych Ultra. I'll show you the other side of this air shock in just a moment. It is basic suspension. But first, let's take a look at the frame. Psychrown. Looks like a retro mustardy yellow looking color mixed with black. Has a frame integrated battery. We'll pop that off in just a moment. But down here has some of the specs listed. Claims a net weight of 75.4 pounds. Max payload of 330 pounds. You could pause this and read the rest if you want. And let's pop the battery out. It is a 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hours of energy. Cells are listed as LG brand lithium ion battery. This product is covered by Ping and insurance. It's kind of middle of the road on size. We'll give you a pretty good range and keep the weight down to nine pounds, 7.2 ounces for the battery. Check out what we're charging it with. Comes with some flyers and a manual. Front wheel will attach with a quick release. Pedals are metal and a little bit more narrow than what we typically see. Kind of more like mountain bike style. Metal cleats will bite into your shoes and also your shin, so watch those. I actually do not know what this thing is. Our cell phone, maybe? Oh yeah, what we came here for. Battery charger. This one is a three amp charger, so a 15 amp hour battery pack divided by three amp charge rate. Be about five hours if you ran it down to zero to charge it to completely full. And this electric bicycle comes with a motorcycle phone support. This might be beneficial when I'm testing the top speed lighter. But before we do that, we should probably put the handlebars on, which are mostly flat with a slight rise, little reflector on front, DY Island brake levers, round rubber grips, thumb throttle on the left, controls, looks like we'll have a horn and lights, and of course, nine speeds on the Shimano Altus shifter. Typically I see seven or eight, so a couple more than usual. And typically we see a display under here, which is exactly what we see here. Power that up soon. There is a typical USB charging port down there. And let's take a look at some of the creature comforts. So we get a, a pretty extra wide seat. Definitely has a lot of squish to it. Branded side crown with a little bit of stitching. Here's the shape that we get on this one. We'll try it out soon. A little bit of extra suspension springs built into the bottom. And it looks like the light on the rear. Pull this tab to activate the battery. This will operate independent from the battery on the bike. This runs on its own battery, so there's no brake light or anything. No fenders are included on the stock bike. I think I did see there was a sale going on for those fenders. Helps keep the bike a little bit lighter for like mountain biking or something. And then of course, since this is a full suspension e-bike, we have a suspension fork on front. Typical preload adjustment. And then on the right stanchion, we get adjustments with clicks, so you can kind of tune it into your weight. What kind of stiffness do you want to ride with? And this quick release skewer should slide right through there. I accidentally broke some plastic up on both sides. We should be able to see straight through that. I really hope this works. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Let's try it from the other way. Please, 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 please. We might have a problem. Oh no, that was the wrong way to do it. I have an idea, I'll show you in a few. Pedals on. And real quick, let me show you what I look like on this bike. Probably shouldn't ride the bike without this front quick release on there. Here's what I look like with a seat on minimum height. Suspension feels pretty cushy. Here's what the bike looks like with me with an inseam of 34 sitting on the bike looks like. On minimum seat height. It's got an easy adjust clamp here on the seat. And now with the seat on max height, seat comes up to almost the handlebars. Here's what I look like on the bike. My foul stroke. Suspension seems pretty flush. 
Not having a rack and a fender on the back actually makes it easier to get on and off the bike. Gotta get that front wheel down. And as promised, here's what the suspension looks like from the other side. Pretty soft and squishy. Super Sport World's innovation technology design. It's pretty basic stuff. Wouldn't do anything too hardcore on it. The bike does ship with an air pump. And let's take a look at those gears. So they give us a derailleur guard and a Shimano Altus derailleur and nine gears on the cassette. Taking a peek down here, we can see it is a Shimano Hyperglide C cassette. On the front, we have a guard on both sides so the chain will be less likely to fall off. I really gotta get this front wheel on there though. Doesn't reach. Let's pop the battery on there. Peel that off and fire it up. So it is a color display. I'm not sure if I've seen this one before. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Indicates our pedal assist, so we will get five levels of pedal assist. Battery will display up here in terms of five bars. MPH front and center, and down here we get max speed, average speed, odometer, and trip. We can dim or brighten the display with that button. And then we get a actual light button that turns on and off. The headlight on front, you can see it hitting the floor there. Basic headlight. Buttons up there do not operate this, as I mentioned. Turn on this light down here. Don't forget to turn it off. So let's try the throttle. Still don't have that front wheel attached. Let's try pedal assist five. Pedal assist five, ready, go. Throttle only speed shows an instant 28.6. So let's get that front wheel attached on there, get it outside and play. All right, here's the plan. That'll do it. That's how you do it. Boom, baby. I've made a mess. But now we're back in business. All right, dudes, let's check out the Psych Crown, Psych Ultra. We'll fire up the Strava here so we can track our official range. Get this thing fired up. Come on, dude, I thought we'd been over this. Didn't you read the box? We can't be riding this bike with our shoelaces untied. Ow, ow, ow. Bro, you can't be doing this, dude. So the very first test we're gonna do is the 20% grade. Now we do have nine speeds on the shifter. We're not gonna use any of those gears to start. We'll just put on pedal assist five, full throttle. See what kind of torque we're working with. So feels like a pretty torquey bike. This thing's pulling us straight up. Absolutely no problem. Pelsis 5, no pedaling. That's seven miles an hour. But since this is a nine speed bike, it's heavy. I'm just gonna go ahead and try this on gear one with no pedal assist. No, this, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna bump it on pedal assist one. And pedal assist one, this is actually pulling us up on pedal assist one. Just kind of just pedaling here. Kind of ghost pedaling, really. Beautiful day out here in Southern California today. Man, it's like 75 and sunny. I'm almost a little bit warm in this hoodie. So let's feel this bike out. Very first thing I'm noticing about this bike is the seat is very uh, squishy and comfortable. That rear shock is like really, really squishy. We'll see if it bottoms out here a little bit later today on this ride. So can we see the display? I can see it uh, with no glasses. Go ahead, throw on the polarized shades. Can you see this display? Yep, I can actually see it, so that's good. So gear one here, pedal assist one. Um, take us up to about 10 miles an hour. It's clearly a cadence sensor because it kind of just gave us all that power. Let's try again from a stop here. So it'll give you a decent amount of power up to 10 and then cut you off. We're on gear three. Let's try pedal assist two, boom. Immediately hits us with that power. I get that's a fairly strong motor, 16 miles an hour. And since it doesn't have like any racks or fenders or anything, I can tell, you know, it's got a little bit less weight than a typical bike with all those gadgets. Yeah, let's try pedal assist three now. So this thing does not show us like our power output or anything, but it takes us up to 20 miles an hour and we're on gear five cruising at about 20 gear six and let's move on to gear seven now so that's a natural cadence at 20 let's bump it on pedal assist four that brings us up to pretty powerful feeling bike 24 according to here and we'll test the agility of this bike going around this corner it's a fat tire e-bike so this one does put you up on the handlebars a little bit more than some of the more uh, relaxed style e-bikes so i feel a little bit more in control of that front wheel with more weight up on the front feeling like superman on this bike right now so gear number eight and no, that's gear. No, that was gear eight. Okay, so gear nine. So I'm liking the wide range of gears on this bike. Pedaling at 24 feels fine. So some of the bikes that only have seven gears, you will run into ghost pedaling at uh, sooner speeds, you know, maybe like 20 miles an hour instead of like 24. And out of the box, I am noticing this this right brake, which is the back brake, is, it needs to be adjusted a little bit, no big deal. You just kind of rotate this screw right here, rotate it in and get a little bit more, adjust that. Let's pump this back down to pedal assist three, pedal assist two and try throttle only, see what that'll do. So it looks like 
this will be uh, kind of like a tiered throttle response. So whether or not you pedal or use throttle on Pedal Assist 2, it'll take you up to 16 or it cuts you off at that hard limit. Same goes for Pedal Assist 3. Whether you pedal or throttle only, it'll cut you off at 20. And let's take it off road here just a little bit. So feel out the suspension. This seat is extra soft. This is the first thing I'm really like noticing about this bike. And suspension, <laughs> make a little bit of noise there. It's super plush, super soft. Probably wouldn't be doing anything too hardcore on this bike. You'll bottom it out pretty quickly. Let's put it on Palisades 5. Now get out here in traffic, see if we can keep up. 25, gotta get over here. 28, according to the onboard. And it pretty much cuts us off at 28.6. Let's try throttle. Well, hold us on throttle at 28.6. Yeah, go get out the GPS and just, you know, verify that. Technically a class three electric bike should not um, allow us to throttle beyond 20 miles an hour, but I don't have a problem with it at all throttling. This is fun. Hey, bro, if you had a motor on that Bianchi, you could just be out here riding right now. You don't gotta haul it. Riding here in traffic, I am mindful. I do not have a brake light on this thing. What are all these shopping carts doing on this truck? So let's go ahead and try out the zero to 20 acceleration on this bike. GPS in my right hand, thumb throw is on the left, which could prevent, oh, look at this dude popping a wheelie up there. Could prevent you from using your signals on your left hand. Throttle only, ready, go. Full throttle, so pretty decently good acceleration. 15, 20. So pretty average, normal, you know what you'd expect from about 750 watt nominal motor. Now we're gonna go ahead and whip this thing around, give it a high speed run. Full throttle, 15, 16, 22, 25, 27, 28. Car is turning in front of us. Will they stop? Yeah, 28. So speedometer is accurate, it says 28.6 on there, 28 here. Let's try pedaling just a little bit here. Yeah, that's, this is all you can do on this bike, which is pretty typical. That is the fastest a class three electric bike should be allowed to go legally. My goodness. What a beautiful day out here on the beach today. So before we go out there, let's just try it on this little hill here. See how it does. Oh shoot, I only have an umbrella, it's just three. Put it on five. And yeah, you can climb right up, man. No problem. Suspension, let's try it out here on this rough stuff. I think it's that wide up front kind of bouncing around, but uh, this suspension actually isolates you from the bumps a lot better than most bikes I try on there. You know, it's not like super excellent suspension, but it isolates you from the bumps. So we got these big old 26 inch by four inch wheel. Tires that is, let's drop it down a few gears. Get out here on the boardwalk, feel out this suspension. See how it feels. And leave this on Pelosis 5, get it down to about gear one here soon. Try it out on the sand. And I'm just gonna, Touch on the throttle here, see how this feels. I'm gonna actually let off here a little bit. Man, there's a lot of people out here on the beach for a middle of the winter. Don't know what the IPX rating is on this thing. Maybe we should actually start heading back up here just a bit. Plow on through the sand here just a bit. See how this thing holds up. So throttle only is starting to lose steam just a little bit. It is a uh, pretty peppy motor, but Let's see here, 10 miles an hour, 8 miles an hour. The sand's pretty soft here. Drop it down a gear or two here in case I need to start pedaling. We're plowing through at a decent rate here. Kind of going uphill, it's starting to lose steam just a bit. I'm gonna start helping it now, I'm pedaling just a bit. So pretty decently peppy bike. Once we get out here on the flat stuff, where it's a little bit more hard right here, we're holding 10, 11 miles an hour, just fine. Just filmed a few B-roll shots. Let's go ahead and run it back the other way in the sand, kind of doubling down on our sand time today. I think this bike will be fine. Let's just try it out. So this is throttle only pedal assist five we're on gear one get this oh about lost it there get this thing up to speed here just a bit and run it back up oh my goodness this doggy is running towards me where is my exit i can't even see so we're throttling only here's my original tracks right here and pounding on this battery just a bit here let's just keep going in the sand here for a minute on over here so the beauty of these 26 inch by four inch tires is these are just about as good as you can get for riding on the sand, other than all wheel drive in the same format. Just kind of helping it a bit here. And this is some pretty gnarly sand right here. It's getting pretty soft. Skate on through here, whoa. And the knobby tread keeps you planted nicely. Let's pop off over here, over by this actual engine cycle. All right, let's continue torturing this battery. We'll run it up the California incline. As you already know, the California incline is that cliff over there, 85 feet tall, 12% grade. There appears to be a lot of congestion here, so this will be interesting to see how it works out, but I'll try throttle only going up. Whoop, got lost it there. Full throttle, full throttle, full throttle, torquing, full, oh shoot, hit the edge. Full throttle and full throttling it. Yeah, we're, uh, we're pulling right up this hill, but we're gonna have to hit the brakes here and start from basically a stop on this pretty steep part. I'm not pedaling this thing at all is pulling us up. Five, six, 
six. Oh, we'll try out these brakes here at the bottom of the California incline right before we crash into that thing. Hopefully we don't. They are 160 millimeters. Full throttle here at the bottom of the California incline. We are five, eight miles an hour. Let's see where we top out here. I'm not gonna pedal it at all. I'm gonna ghost pedal, just shift up to nine, 16, 18. And that display is a little bit dim, I guess, uh, through my shades, 19. And yeah, I mean, it's a strong buffeting motor. Not sure how many amps the controller is, but uh, we're hitting about 20 and I'm gonna have to tap on the brakes. We might hit 21 by the time we get to the top. I'm sure beats the uh, good old fashioned acoustic pedaling up this thing though. We'll take a quick peek at the views up here, then through us. Uh, Floor it on down here. We'll try the brakes out here in a moment. Probably not the most strong brakes I've seen on an e-bike, but coming into this hill here at about yeah, 15. They're strong enough to lock up the rear tire and they are hydraulic, so you know they're they're better than mechanical in terms of the delivery of that power. If you're gonna be taking your bike on a racetrack, I'd probably upgrade the rotors to maybe like 180s. But just for, you know, dilly dallying in around town, 160s will be just fine. The good thing about the smaller rotor up front is you're probably not going to accidentally lock up your front tire unless you're on a slippery surface, that is. So let's say you're cruising along at about 20 miles an hour. You need to come to a stop quickly. Can you do it? <laughs> yes, not as quickly as 180 millimeter rotors, but that front 160 is a little bit more newbie friendly. Ah, it's a lot, a lot of bikes coming through here. Biker game. Those are all acoustics. Oh gosh, almost time for another brake test here. I don't even think they look. So battery is currently showing two out of five bars. We're gonna head on home, check the final range. But first, let me share my final thoughts on the Cycrown Cyc Ultra. So normal list price is 1800 bucks. It is on sale right now in the description box below this video. I think the price should be right around 1400 bucks. And if you do decide this is the bike for you, if you did buy through that link in the description box, of course I would support my reviews here on Talibi TV and I greatly appreciate your support. Things that I like about the bike, it is pretty peppy. It will hit the maximum legal class three speed of 28 miles per hour. Although it will do that on throttle only, although it should do it uh, with just pedaling, not throttle. You probably could dial that down in the settings. It's a pretty good climber, does good in the sand. And of course it is full suspension and has those nine gears on the cassette, which is great. Areas for improvement, I don't love the brakes. Uh, 160 millimeters is fine. They are hydraulic, so that's a bonus. And the price, well, that's for you to decide. Let's go check the final range. Still running it pretty hard, 28 miles an hour. And just rolling back into the neighborhood here at 19 miles. I was out there a little bit longer than usual, hour and 37 minutes. We did a little bit longer on the sand, twice as long on the sand today. And this 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery pack is showing. One bar remaining on the range. Let's go ahead and turn this bike off and back on, see if it gives us maybe two bars. Yeah, now it's showing two bars after turning it on back off. So 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery pack. I was running this thing pretty hard out in the sand, going pretty fast, 28 miles an hour, really drains the battery pretty quickly. In general, you know, I'd say this bike would be good for about 40 miles of range if you actually pedal it and don't do ridiculous stuff. The way I'm riding it today, you know, I might do more like 25, maybe 30, pushing it in the sand and all that at 200 pounds. It's a pretty fun bike. If you guys do want to buy one, buy it through the link below in the description box. It'll give you the best price. You can see the current discounts. You can also see what else the company has to offer. However, if this is not the electric bike you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there. All right, buddy, you can take them off. Go for it. I don't need them anymore. Let's get a voltage readout on this battery. Voltage is 46.8. Well, you want to go further? 